Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Sacedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be talking about the acid-base definitions that we're going to be using in class. So the first one is called the Arrhenius definition. It is the oldest and probably simplest definition of acids and bases that you can come up with. In fact, this guy is the one that came up with it, and it was pretty much the first formalized scientific you know, idea of what acids and bases were. Before then, people just looked at their properties. So acids he said, increase the amount of hydronium ion, and hydronium is just H3O+. Bases increase the amount of hydroxide ion, and hydroxide is OH-. You probably know this one by now because we've used it so often. We have hydroxides and everything, right? Now, where did his definition come from? Well, it comes from an equation called the self-ionization of water. And so this is the self-ionization of water equation. You have two water molecules in the liquid phase, and when they are put together, they will spontaneously react and make H3O plus and make OH minus, okay? So it just so happens that in this picture, you can see that happening. So you can see this hydrogen is moving from here and it's going over here. That means that, you know, I have H3O plus and OH minus as a result. So his definition is a little coincidental, but what he said is acids increase how much of this there is in water. So if you add drops of lemon juice or something to your water, you're going to increase the amount of H3O plus in your water as a result of that. And that's why it is acidic. Bases, on the other hand, let's say I add some soap to my water. I'm going to be making instead more hydroxide ions. And so this would be high and this would be low. And keep in mind this, okay? This is just like a random little side note. A lot of times people talk about how much H plus there is in water. H plus doesn't exist because it will immediately react and form H3O plus. If you put an H plus and an H2O together, you get H3O plus. However, a lot of times people just say H plus, but they mean H3O plus. And you'll see that a lot in biology. So a lot of times in biology, they'll talk about the hydrogen ion concentration, but really what they're talking about is the hydronium ion concentration. So what are the pros? Arrhenius' definition is super simple. What's the con? It only works in water, right? So his equation is his equation. His definition is based on an equation, and it is the self-ionization of water. So if you don't have water in your solution, then this doesn't really work at all anymore. Okay, let's talk about the next one. So we have Bronston and Lori and their co-definition of acids and bases. It's the most common definition of acids and bases. Even in bio, you'll probably see this one. This is the one they'll probably talk to you about. And so all you need to know are that acids donate hydrogen ions and bases accept hydrogen ions. And both of these definitions, so the Bronston, Lori, and the Arrhenius definition, is kind of commonly associated with the pH scale. And remember, pH says that zero to just below seven is acidic and 14 to just above seven is basic or alkaline. All right, let's talk about how this works then, right? So in any acid-base reaction on the left side, I'm gonna have an acid and I'm gonna have a base, and you have a 50-50 shot as which one is which, okay? But I want you to be able to figure out which one is and which one isn't based on the definition of that bronsted lowry acid-base stuff. Okay, I have HCl, I have H2O. One of these is going to be donating its hydrogen. Notice they both have hydrogens. One of them is going to be moving. Either this one's going to move from here to here, or this one's going to move from here to here. Which one is it? Whichever one moves, that one is your acid. Answer, HCl is the acid. Answer then, what's the opposite? H2O must be your base. Now here's a picture of that, all right? Notice I have my hydrogen here. The hydrogen is moving from here and attaching to water, and that's how I make H3O+. What's left over then? I have Cl minus all by itself after the H plus is gone. Next up, see if you can do this one. I have NH3 plus H2O gives you OH minus and NH4 plus. Again, either the hydrogen is going to move from here to here or a hydrogen is going to move from here to here. Which one is it? Answer, H2O. The H is moving from here to here. That's how I'm getting my NH4. NH3 then must be my base. It is accepting the hydrogen ion. And here's a picture of that. So again, I got H2O. So H2O, the H is moving from here to here. When it attaches to the NH3, it makes NH4 plus. What's left over? Just an O and an H with a minus charge. That is hydroxide. And also notice one more thing. Water acted like a base in this situation, and water acted like an acid in this situation. And both of these are totally acceptable, right? Think about that. Um, water is neutral, but some substances can act like acids and bases depending on the situation they're in. It just so happens water is one of those. All right, so what do we call the result? It's called the conjugate acid-base pair 
every acid has a conjugate base. So HCl, when you get rid of the H, you get Cl. That would be an example of a conjugate base. Now, what about every base? Every base then has a conjugate acid, right? So NH3, if you add an H to it, that makes it an acid now, and so you get NH4+, and that is a conjugate acid. So let's try to turn some acids into conjugate bases. So these acids can be turned into conjugate bases by removing hydrogens. So hydrogens are these white things right here, and I can only remove, remember, a single one. What happens when I remove an H from HNO3? What am I left with? NO3 minus. Why the minus? Remember, I'm not just removing a hydrogen, I'm removing a hydrogen ion. And hydrogen ions are positive things. What about HF? F minus. What about H2SO4? HSO4 minus. Notice I only removed one hydrogen. That's the definition. It says I can only remove a single one. H3PO4, I get H2PO4 minus. Simple as that. Just get rid of one of these little H's and you all of a sudden have made a conjugate base. You've turned an acid into a conjugate base. Let's see if we can do the opposite. Let's turn these bases into conjugate acids. What did it say I needed to do? I need to add a hydrogen ion. So let's add a hydrogen ion to every single one of these. And here is what these look like. So NH3 is right here. If I add an H to it or an H plus to it, I get NH4 plus. What about this? This is NO2 minus. I need to add an H plus to it, so I get HNO2. ClO minus, I add an H plus to it, I get HClO. HCO3 minus, I add an H to it, I get H2CO3. Okay? And notice then, that means every acid base problem that's a Bronsted Lori one has an acid and a base. That would be the stuff on the left side that you have to predict. And then a conjugate acid and a conjugate base that's made when you remove or add a hydrogen ion to those things. Let's see if we can figure this out. All right, so I got ammonium. And I've got, or I don't know why I said ammonium, I have ammonia and hydrofluoric acid and I'm making ammonium and a fluoride ion. I want to know which one of these is my acid and which one's my base. So is the H going from here to here or is the H going from here to here? You got a 50-50 shot. Take your guess. Answer, HF. And what's left over then? If this is my acid, this must be then my conjugate base. What about the next one? That means that if this is an acid, this has to be a base. So what's on the opposite side? This is my conjugate acid. So this is kind of nice. Once you've figured out one thing on this side, you know everything on both sides now. Because if this is an acid, this has to be a base. And if this is an acid, that is your conjugate base. And so this must be your conjugate acid. And it just kind of works out that way. So you can actually see that happening. So this H is moving from here, and it's attaching here, turning it into this. What's left over is an F with a minus charge to it. And so you have an acid and a base. You have your conjugate base. You have your conjugate acid. All right, now keep this in mind. Lots of acid-base reactions make water, okay? But be on the lookout because if an H plus is moving, sometimes you'll see HOH. Now, what is HOH? HOH is water because look at it. You have two H's. You have an O. That's really just H2O. So if you want to write that down, you might want to write that down because it's a very simple one. All right, let's take a look. Hydroxide ions and carbonic acid are mixed together. I'm getting water and I'm getting bicarbonate. All right, let's see which one. Is the H moving from here to here or from here to here? 50-50 shot, take your guess. Answer, this is my acid. That must mean this is my conjugate base then, all right? And that must mean then this is my base and that must be the conjugate acid. Notice water is a conjugate acid here. Remember, it can be an acid or a base, so it must be able to also be a conjugate acid or a conjugate base. All right. And in case you're like, hey, I don't see the H moving. When the H moves here to here, you get HOH, which is H2O. All right. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, let me know.